All right. So thanks for joining us on our first web series for um, District 11. I haven't come up with a catchy name yet, but maybe something will hit me um, over the next couple of months. But um, I really wanted to put these uh, webinars together uh, for all agents um, to help you all strengthen your 4-H program and grow your 4-H program. Uh, our 4-H program cannot grow if uh, our members um, and individuals don't see value in it. And a lot of times we get comments like, well, our meetings lose 15 minutes long and that's it. And it's kind of boring and pointless to come. And so we're going to kind of go back to the basics and like take it back to some old school stuff um, because I really think we've gotten away from it. And so as we continue these topics, not only are they meant these trainings meant for you as agents, but feel free to share these with your club managers. These um, Enhancing the Club Experience um, programs, I'm also available to come teach either in person or um, online uh, for your volunteers. And so I don't want you all to just um, get the knowledge and then expect you, although you can, take it out and share it, but I'm certainly available as a resource to you. So as we move through today, put your questions in text chat and then we will uh, we'll proceed. So we're going to talk about why we have club meetings. And so it's important to understand that throughout these Enhancing the Club experience, I adapted them today for um, the sake of a webinar, but there are some hands-on activities that you can do. Uh, and so those are available to you. But we're going to talk about why we have club meetings and what, what are some successful strategies for you to plan um, for club meetings. And if you um, if you start putting this into practice, then your kids are going to start putting it into practice, and so are your volunteers. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some keys to success in effective club meetings and what those look like. So, what do y'all think are some reasons um, adults come to meetings? You can either talk or. Uh, Everybody has a mic, so you can talk or put it in um, text chat. So I think some of the reasons I think adults come to meeting is to make sure they get the information, right? They to get the information, and they come for business. They come to make sure they can handle business. Okay, um, and because they want to know what's going on. But why do our kids come to meetings? Candace, you hit the nail on the head. Kids come for fun. So if we're having a 15 minute business meeting, they have no desire to be there. And if they have no desire to be there, Karen, you said it. This is their social hour. They like to come hang out with their friends and do like-minded things. Um, but if they aren't having fun, then we're not going to keep them in the program, and then we're just not going to have a program. And so the key to this is making sure that um, we understand what our purpose is and who our audience is. Parents will come if their kids come. And you can do the business and the fun all at the same time. So does anybody know the four parts to a club meeting? Candace, what's one of the four parts? Okay, the business part, the business part to the meeting, sure. So the four parts to the meeting are the inspiration, the program, the business part of the meeting, and then the recreation, the fun. And if you notice, they're in that order for a purpose. 
So inspiration normally kicks us off and gets us in the right mindset um, and helps us to remember our purpose and why we are a um, why we are the largest youth development program in the nation. Our program is somebody who's going to provide some education. And I say someone because it could be a youth, it could be an adult, it could be a guest, it could be a, a, a youth just wanting to talk about a new experience that they had. Maybe we had some kids go to Texas 4-H Congress and they want to share about their experience. Um, and not just like a five-minute yeah, I went to Congress, it was fun, but really kind of something to get them engaged, pictures, things like that. And then we have the business meeting, which is why the parents are there. They want to know dates, times, who needs to be where, what my responsibilities are, et cetera. If you have kids, you understand what I mean when I say that. Um, but you're just, you're there for the business. And then the recreation, that's the fun part. We need to have some sort of game, some sort of something fun for them to do. Um, maybe it's a fun community service project. Maybe we do a fun service learning project where they don't even realize that they're learning something. Um, but we need to have something fun. And when we talk about this, um, here's some time breakdowns. And so I know I went through some of this in May, but we've had some new hires. Um, since then, some of you weren't there and able to join us, um, but um, the inspiration is five to 10 minutes. The program is approximately 15. The business is 15 to 20 minutes. It should be no longer than 15 to 20 minutes. And then the recreation is 15 to 20 minutes. And so if you add that up, a 4-H club meeting should be no longer than an hour, unless it's a party or or something significant and something that was discussed previously. Um, it's important during that business meeting that those kids are running the business meeting. Um, and really, the kids should be running every part of the meeting. And I'm going to go through some, some tools and resources that we've created for you um, to help hold yourself accountable and hold those kids accountable. Um, if they have ownership in their club meetings, then they will get it done. Um, but you've got to you've got to make sure that they have some ownership in that, um, because if they're just showing up for the sake of showing up, then what's their true purpose? Um, we're trying to teach them um, the important things about a business meeting um, and what those parts look like. So we plan for a multitude of reasons, um, just like we plan our work. They need to plan their meeting. Uh, and so each job or officer has a very specific role. Um, it ensures for a balanced um, a balanced club year, maybe. So we don't have 14, or not 14, that's an unrealistic number. Maybe we don't have four um, food and nutrition programs, so we can spread that out. Um, it lets fam families see what's planned. Um, so they can get excited about what's coming. Um, and it allows for preparation. And so um, we don't look like we're running around like a chicken with our head chopped off um, to the to the public, but sometimes we are. And that's just part of it. Um, and then um, the last reason is really we can assure that this is what the membership wants. Um, the worst thing we can do is decide for them. How many of you do that with your councils? And be honest. You're scrambling. You're going to just do it for them because it's easier. I did it as an agent. It was easier this way. It was easier for me to just do it for them. I could get it done during the day. We just tell them what to do, and we were done, right? Um, and that's when I struggled the most because they had no ownership. <laughs> well, it's okay. Ideas can backfire, but um, – and maybe they don't go the direction we think they need to go, but they can certainly go – in a different direction, and maybe that's the direction 
we need to let them go and not be so type A. Yes, I said it. We hire um, individuals who have a tendency to be type A, um, a little bit controlling or a lot controlling um, and planners, right? Very detail oriented. Um, we often hear people refer to us as being a little OCD, if you will. Um, but doing all of this ensures that we can let some of that control go um, and, and get things situated. So as you begin, you really have to look at your audience and look at your purpose. Um, and I thought that what was really cool was um, Norma Munoz in Oasis County was sharing with me that she was planning for a meeting and a lot of times they just hire a caterer or hire, get sandwiches brought in for lunch or something, you know, something simple. Um, but the new, she tried a new caterer and the new caterer that she hired really wanted to know who his audience was because he wasn't going to breed fried food to a healthy South Texas meeting. And so he created the menu around the purpose. And I think if we take, um, take that into consideration, if we plan if we help them plan things around who they are, um, what their ages look like, um, we'll have more success. There's no sense in going to a shooting sports meeting talking about food and nutrition. It's just the correlation is very slim. And so we need to talk about what resources they have available, maybe what our program emphasis is in the, um, in the state program um, and what new stuff do we have being brought to the table? There's lots of new stuff out there. Y'all just have to be able to um, find it and use it. And maybe that's part of the problem, but that's what I'm here for, is to help you. So one of the things I wanted to share with you is the 4-H member interest survey. And yes, it takes some work, but this could give you a lot of insight into what your membership looks like. And so if you do this at the, at the county level with your, with your county council um, and share it with your club managers, those who really truly have a vested interest in, the, um, in their clubs um, really can um, take their club to a whole new level. And so you'll see here, they wanna know about what they wanna learn, they wanna know about community service projects, um, they want to know about what you want to do to have fun, the recreation part of the meeting. Um, and then it talks a little bit about um, the second example there um, is asking some very pointed discussion questions. Um, and I really think you could use both pages front and back. Um, and just gauging on on your audience. Maybe for a younger audience, you use example one. Maybe for a more of a teen club, you use example two. So those resources, that actual, that document, those two documents right there are on the Texas 4-H website. So the answer is when. Um, and this is key. And I know I'm telling y'all to add one more thing to your summer, but if we make this a priority, then during the year, it, um, it can really help us a little bit more. So we want to plan between June and August before meetings kick off, um, before the new forage year kicks off. Maybe they have an officer training or an officer meeting. And you can use the, you can adapt your plan through the year, but If you have a plan, you're more likely to hold yourself accountable, just like setting a goal. If you have an action plan um, for your goal, then um, it's more likely to get accomplished, right? It's just like losing weight. Well, everybody says they want to lose weight or maybe they want to bulk up, but if you don't have a plan on how you're going to get there, it's not going to happen, um, and so we want to we want to make sure that we put that plan in place if our goal is to have a successful 4-H club, which should be the ultimate goal. So a good plan involves 
includes member involvement, recognition. Recognition is huge. Um, and it doesn't have to be big. Maybe it's like standing up in front of people and announcing their accomplishments and everybody clapping for them. Sometimes an attaboy is all we need, right, to get going. Sometimes it's the one comment that, you know, wow, thanks, you did a great job. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I know for me that that's sometimes all I need to, like, relight my fire um, just to get going. Um, we have to review bylaws every year. Um, we have to complete the chartering process. Um, and then we take the feedback in and um, through those member surveys and really kind of take into consideration what they have, right? Does anybody have any questions so far? So this is a big goal sheet is really all it is. And so we want them to sit down, maybe it's the officer team, maybe it's the entire club, depending on the size, and establish their goals um, for what they want to do. And here it tells you um, in the second box, it tells you who's supposed to do what part of the meeting. And so you'll see that the program is coordinated by the first vice president. And they don't have to do every one, but they make sure that the program is lined up for the meeting for that month. Um, the second vice president is in charge of recreation. Um, introduction of new members and guests is done by the third vice president. And the club meeting report is done by the secretary and or reporter. And I know that there are some clubs that have both, um, and that's great. Um, but let's make sure that we have a clear definition of what their roles are. And if maybe you don't need both, maybe now is the time to transition your office, one of your officers to a health and safety officer or a technology officer, um, something that's more relevant um, to today's kids, right? So when we talk about setting club goals, that's what we're going to, we're going to set club goals based on those new member surveys and clearly define them and clearly um, create an action plan. So some good goals are to promote 4-H at two new schools and recruit two new members. And maybe that's something you can do at the county level. I know we have a lot of rural counties and so y'all do a lot of that. Um, but these goals here are really, um, they're good sound goals. And so maybe it's, um, I, I see a common goal a lot is to participate in one community service activity each month, right? And they don't have to be big. They just need to be some sort of service. Um, and you don't have to have a service activity at each meeting. Um, you can have different ones and maybe your service activity is your your program or your recreation one, um, but keep that in mind. And so we plan for everything. The more you plan, the better off you are. Um, and it's like that saying that I shared with y'all in May, um, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. And so keep those words in, in, in your back pocket because that's truly, um, where we are and that's why we plan that's why we do program planning in advance as far as advanced as we do it right because we have to plan our year and figure out what we want to accomplish as professionals well it's no different than with our 4-h clubs um, and so we plan the time the date location who's going to do the inspiration who's going to do the program business meeting um, maybe there's some things in your business meeting you know that are coming up every year your county fair, your county stock show, um, an annual community service um, project that y'all do, the recreation, um, or maybe y'all do some Clover Kids activities. Um, the, oppor the opportunities are endless. It just depends on what you want to, or what that club wants to accomplish in that year. So um, this is an example of a calendar. And so you can see here that um, there's a lot here um, for them to fill out. But if we all fill this out together and everybody gets a copy, then we're better off um, because it holds everybody accountable 
And not that we're going to poke and say, oh, you didn't do your job. Um, we're just, if people know their job, they're more likely to follow through with it. And so if we fill this out way in advance, um, like in August, um, then we're better, um, we're going to be better prepared as the year um, continues. And so you'll see there they have the inspiration, who's going to do the pledges, um, what program and or speaker are you going to have, um, and this will help that first vice president um, know who's supposed to be there. If y'all are going to have any type of refreshments, not saying that you have to, or if you have any type of special event, field trip, or community service project. Um, and so if you give this to your officer team, and you can even give it to your membership, um, just to help kind of keep them uh, keep them in check. It's a good checks and balances. So we plan for committees. We plan for National 4-H Week. Um, National 4-H Week is in October. We also plan for National Volunteer Week, which is in April, um, because we certainly wouldn't wouldn't be doing what we do without the help of our volunteers. Um, we plan for membership drives um, and recruitment. Uh, what do y'all do to get new members? What do y'all do now to recruit new members? Anybody? Facebook. Um, ambassadors go to open houses at schools. Does anybody have a fun day where they invite, the 4-H members invite um, maybe a non-4-H friend to come? Maybe you have a, a lock-in or a, yeah, something fun for them to kind of just get immersed into what we are, we're doing. <laughs> Refrio County is having a back-to-school dance. That's kind of fun. Something fun for them to get involved in. Um, and then we have a club recognition event. A lot of times that's a, for us, that's a trip to Fiesta, Texas, or SeaWorld, or something of the sort. Um, maybe it's a pizza party um, at the end of the year. And a lot of times, um, not that they have to, but they can have up to two club fundraisers a year. Um, and so if we plan all that in advance, um, and everybody's aware, then um, it's less likely that people are going to get sideswiped or not know what's going on. And so when we have a business meeting, mind you, I said that the business meeting should be maximum of 20 minutes, right? Um, this is everything that should be included in your business meeting. And so, when you were thinking about that stuff um, and help your club members understand that um, and your club managers, that this is what the business meeting entails. A business meeting should not be five minutes, but it also should not be a whole hour. I had a 4-H club where the business meeting was a whole hour, and it was so long and so tedious as a, as a 9, 10, 11-year-old. Um, and I can just remember thinking, like, wow, Mom, we do this just so I can show a show a pig, you know? Um, but we want to just kind of get get to business, get it done, and get it over with um, and move on. So um, it does help if you always have a printed agenda. And maybe that's emailed to people nowadays. Maybe it's not necessarily printed. Um, there's lots of ways that we can do that. Um, maybe you hand write it out on a big post-it note if they don't have the money for printing or um, or if printing is, is an issue. Um, stick to the allotted times for each section. Um, the agenda needs to be in this order. Um, the inspiration needs to be first, then the program, then the business, and we always want to end with some fun in the recreation. Um, and then we want to make sure that our officers are using correct parliamentary procedure. That is huge. 
Um, and maybe it's just little things. Maybe it's how to correctly make a motion. Um, um, maybe it's learning point of order, those kind of things. But those are important and, and key aspects to having a successful club meeting. I had a friend of mine come up to me and he said, you know, Mayor, when I was a kid, I learned parliamentary procedure at my 4-H club meeting. And now um, kids don't even know what that is. And so as adults, um, how many of you have been to an adult meeting where they just have zero parliamentary procedure? I've been at a school board meeting where parliamentary procedure is so off, it's not even funny, you know? Has anybody had that experience? Karen, Karen yeah. It, and it's, it's a little nerve-wracking, frustrating. Um, there's no order. It, it's, it's, you just get frustrated and don't even want to be there, which completely um, ruins the purpose for that meeting. And so if we can train our officers to make motions correctly and to go through um, the correct order in the agenda, um, we'll be better off. So um, once the planning is finished, you can create a club handbook. Um, and it doesn't have to be fancy or anything. Maybe they get a copy of the calendar, a copy of the contact list, but if we, if we can set them up and ensure all that and give them all the tools that they need, then the members really truly can run the meeting. I've had so many kids come up to me and say, well, I bring the meeting to order and then the club manager talks. Well, the club manager just talks because there was no planning involved in the front end. And so we wanna make sure that um, we are planning and communicating and then certainly celebrating our successes. Um, because recognition is key. Maybe it's a sticker, maybe it's a pencil, maybe it's, I, I don't know, maybe it's a, a, a drawing or um, something of the sort for those that come, you know, to the meeting. Um, but uh, we certainly want to make sure that we are highlighting our successes. So when we, just like we do in extension programs, um, it's really important for us to follow up, right? It's important for us to evaluate um, our, our programs in our 4-H um, our club meetings. Um, just like we evaluate our programs so we know what we can change and know what we can do better, whether it's formal or informal, um, you know, after every district event, I go back to the committee and I say, okay, everybody give me your notes. What can we do better? What can we change? Um, what's this? What's that? You know, um, we want our clubs to put that into practice too, because if it's not broke, let's, don't, let's not fix it. But if it is broke and kids aren't having fun, well then let's reevaluate the situation and figure out where we can make some adjustments. Um, and so these are some of those questions um, that we can ask. And for those of you who really just love um, score sheets, ta-da, there is a 4-H club scorecard. Um, and, and it's not meant for somebody to sit there and evaluate the club meeting like you would maybe like at our performance appraisal. It's not meant to be that formal, but maybe just a, a moment of self-reflection. Maybe a club manager can sit down with the officer team and ask them um, their thoughts on it um, and give themselves a score and rank them and write some comments down. Um, and then if we, if we can voice it, um, then it becomes more of a reality and we're more likely to change it. So um, <clears throat> I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to give you some time to make sure you still have time to go to lunch. Um, but as I kind of wrap up today, the importance of, of planning what we do in the 4-H program, planning our 4-H club meetings, planning our county events um, is incredibly um, important to the success of our program as a whole. 
And so what y'all do at the local level certainly lays the groundwork for the huge empire um, that we've created at Texas 4-H. And so um, just like if you don't have a firm foundation, um, you know, you start having some trouble. Uh, and so these are our tools that are meant to give you a very firm foundation and help you strengthen your program. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> 